All right, this is going to be a quick demonstration of Chord Chart Composer. It's a pretty simple program to use. And I think you'll find that in no time you'll be creating professional looking chord charts with minimal effort. Okay, let's get started. First of all, the main interface is divided into two sections. On the left here, you see the edit pane, and on the right is the render pane. Most of your work will take place in the edit pane. This is where you'll type in your chord chart. And as you type it in, uh, you'll see that chord chart rendered in real time in the render panel on the right. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is give my song a title. Um, and you'll notice that Chord Chart Composer has already determined that the title for your song is most likely my song because it's the first line in the file. So let me add a composer. That would be me. And again, the program is automatically uh, detecting that this is the uh, composer. It's the second line in the file immediately following the title. Now there are other ways to mark up this document so that you don't have to be consistent with that convention, have the first line be the title, have the second line be the composer, using the Chord Pro markup standard, which I'll provide a link to below this video. And you can also get additional information on the Chord Pro format from the help menu here in the application. But for the most part, you can avoid complicated markup uh, by sticking with just a few conventions. Again, as I typed, you uh, may have noticed that over here on the right, the render panel was updating automatically. There's one other thing I'll draw your attention to before I continue. And to do that, I'm going to just change a few settings here so that it's a little bit easier to see. You'll notice that in addition to the song title and composer, uh, we already have an initial key for this song. Chord Chart Composer is always attempting to detect the key based on the harmonic content of the chords you've put in your chord chart. It's important that it does have the right key and recognize the right key so that later on, when you want to render this chord chart in different keys or with a capo, that the transposition works correctly. So if it is not detecting the correct key, you can easily override the detected key by using, again, the Chord Pro format with a Chord Pro tag to uh, specify a key. Uh, in any case, I just wanted to point out that that is happening automatically, that often you don't actually have to enter that Chord Pro tag, and Chord Chart Composer will correctly identify the key so that the right thing will happen when you uh, transpose your chord chart. Okay, so let's move on and create some uh, lyrics and chords. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a section. Now, by typing the word verse, uh, you see it over on the render panel, and at the moment, verse is being rendered with the lyric font. It doesn't detect that as a section name. I'm going to just add a colon, and now it knows that verse is a section name. Now you're probably wondering why did the uh, word verse disappear from the render, because right now we have a section named verse, but that section does not have any content, so Chord Chart Composer will not uh, render the section with, with no content. So let's add some lyrics. Uh, this is my favorite song. Great, so now we have some lyrics, and now we want to add some chords. So adding chords is very simple. You use the square brackets to identify chords, and you just insert your chords uh, right in your lyric line. So for example, I'm going to put a C chord here above the word is, and I'm put an F chord above the word favorite, and I put a G chord above the word song. Again, I'm just going to draw your attention to the render panel. The chords have been hoisted up and are rendered above the lyric line. Now, of course, we can um, add some upper structure and some accidentals if we want. So let's say this is a major seven chord. There you go. Uh, one thing I'll point out before I move on is that uh, notice in the render panel, I'm gonna get rid of that major seven and notice how the lyrics have changed spacing. So as I put this major seven here, it's automatically uh, adjusting the layout of the lyric line to provide enough space for both the C major seven chord symbol and the F chord symbol. It's enforcing a minimum space between those chord symbols, and that's a setting that you can make in the template. I'm going to cover templates in a second video and show you how you can make adjustments to all of the fonts that your chord chart is rendered with, to uh, your margins, to where lines appear, and uh, things like the minimum space between chords. Uh, the bottom line is that Chord Chart Composer is going to try to make a very professional looking chart in a way that doesn't require you to do a lot of futzing with your lyric layout. 
So I'm going to continue here. I'll, let's see, I'll make the F an F2, and I'll make the G a G7. Of course, we could, um, if we need a flat or a sharp, we can show that. Let's see, here's a B flat chord. We'll use a lowercase b. If we want a, uh, a sharp chord, we might say it's a, we might say we have an F sharp chord. We'll use the number symbol and get a sharp. So there you go. You've got a lyric line with chords. So suppose we want to play this chart in A as opposed to C. Well, I can come over here to my render panel, select render key, and I'm going to pick A as my render key, and there you go. The chart is now rendered in A. Now let's say I print a bunch of copies of this chart for the band. They're all going to play in A. The guitar player wants to play with the G shape with capo on his fret 2, so we can go create a chord chart for him by selecting the capo, capo 2, and what we'll see here is that the, uh, on the render panel, we've got the key of A, it's a capo 2 chart, and we can see that the chords here reflect the G shape that we're looking for. So that's pretty much it. It's really simple to use, and uh, I think if you just dig in and start typing with minimal effort, you'll have pretty nice looking charts. In the next video, I'm going to talk about templates and the ways you can modify them, create your own, to create custom uh, layouts. And in the third video, I'll cover some advanced topics uh, covering some of the Chord Pro format tags you can use to enter tablature in your chart, to create comments both on the chord line and the lyric line, repeated sections, those kinds of things. So thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully you'll find the, the application really easy to use.